Brush Options In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at the brush tool and how to change the size and edge hardness and other additional attributes of the brush quickly. This will ultimately help us get more efficient when painting in Photoshop. First, let's create a new document. We'll click on Photo and then double click on default Photoshop size to open it. We will tap F and go to full screen mode and then Ctrl 0 in order to fit in window. And lastly, we will hold down the space bar and reposition the document. And in order to access the brush tool quickly, we can tap the B key. We will right click and choose to reset the tool just to make sure that we are starting afresh with default setting. We can easily access different brushes through different ways and also change the brush options. But in this tutorial, we shall access the brushes through the brush preset picker. We will now click on the downward facing triangle here and we can change the size, the hardness, the shape and the angle of the brush. Below that, we see the recently used brushes, so we will see different brushes here. Below that, we see many folders or groups of brushes that come with Photoshop and are loaded by default. We can click on the disclosure triangle so as to see the triangle. Let's first select the first soft and round brush. We'll tap the enter key to dismiss the preset picker. There are other shortcuts that can be used to change the size of the brush. Like the right bracket key, it can be tabbed to increase the size of the brush and if we hold it down, it increases the size quicker. And to decrease the size of the brush, we can use the left bracket key the same way we use the right bracket key. And if we add the shift key to either the right bracket or the left bracket, we can change the hardness of the brush accordingly. And one thing we need to make sure is that we keep an eye on the icon in the brush preset while changing the hardness because we have no visual representation of it on screen. And if we want a more visual way to change the brush size or the brush hardness, we can always use the heads up display. By holding down the control key and the alter key and dragging to the left, we get a smaller brush. Dragging to the right will get us a bigger brush. And if we drag down, we will get a harder edge brush. And if we drag up, we get a softer edge brush. For now, we will do a little bit smaller of a brush and make sure that the hardness is set to zero and change the color panel to display the HSB slider and let's start painting. Let's choose the hue that we want to paint with, increase the saturation and select the brightness. The first thing we notice when we start painting is that the paint actually sprays beyond the size of the cursor which means that the cursor is only displaying the 50% mark of the brush size. And if we hold down the caps lock key while we paint, we can paint precise to the cursor. Of course, it doesn't change the size of the cursor, it only changes what we see. We will tap caps lock again to see the round brush cursor. Now, to paint a straight line, we click to start a mark and hold down the shift key and drag. And that would constrain our paint stroke to either a horizontal or vertical line depending on the direction 
we move to the cursor and if we want to draw straight lines between two points in Photoshop, we need to click once and then hold down the shift key and click again and keep clicking in different points as long as we hold down the shift key to have Photoshop connect the dots. Alright, let's fill that with white by choosing Edit and then fill and click OK. So far, we have painted with 100% opacity, which gives us a solid color. So, if we paint for the first time and then paint over that area, we don't see any difference. Actually, as we can see, the paint is not building up because it's opaque and solid. So, what we need to do is change the opacity. There are many different ways we can do that. We can use the scrubby slider by positioning our cursor on top of the word opacity and then changing the value by dragging left or right. We could choose the value here and then enter in a numeric value. Or we can even use the slider, which can be accessed by downward pointing arrow, so as to dial in the amount. But frankly speaking, it's very easy when we have the paintbrush selected. We can just type in the 5 and it will give us 50% or just type in 3 for 30%. As we can see here, we can even type in quickly like 6, 7 to get 67% and in order to get it back to 100%, we need to just tap 0. So right now, we will decrease the opacity to 50% and paint once. When we release the cursor and paint over that area, we can see that since we lower the opacity, the paint will gradually start building up. Ok, now we'll tap 0 and set the opacity back to 100. The other thing to look at is the difference that the amount of flow can make. By setting the flow to 100, when we paint around in a circle here, we can see that the paint comes out very quickly. We should think of the flow amount as the speed of paint coming out of the nozzle of a spray can. So, if we were to decrease the flow all the way down to somewhere around 10% and paint and go on painting, we will notice that the paint is being laid down very slowly. It's as though the paint is coming out of that spray can at a much slower speed. Alright, let's now move on to set that back up to 100%. Now, we learnt that by just tapping 0, the opacity of the brush will change. And if we press the shift key and click 0, then we'll find a change in the amount of flow. Next, we learn how to change the way the brush lays down a mark. We can do that by changing the blend mode. For example, we will change it to multiply, paint once. Now it's at 100% opacity with 100% flow. So that's as opaque as that paint is going to become. However, when we paint and multiply, and we paint over the same area. We can see that the value are being multiplied together. We can also try any other blend modes too. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say we could go to screen. This is more like painting with bleach. So anywhere I paint, which means that it actually is going to lighten those values. Ok, let's now set that back to normal. Photoshop has another option called smoothing and it will be really useful when we have to draw a nice smooth stroke. So, let's take a look at it now. All we are going to do is right click and access our brush preset picker 
and we are going to switch to the hard round brush. We will tap enter to dismiss the preset picker and then we'll go to set the smoothness slider down to zero. Now, we'll try to draw a very smooth stroke here. But, as if we see here as we drag our cursor, we can see there is a lot of bumpiness going on there. Let's now change the smoothness slider all the way up to 100% and try to redraw that same stroke. And this time, we can just notice here the line has become a lot smoother. The smoothing control has many different options which we can access with the help of the gear icon. We are using it in what's called stroke catch-up. What it means is when we are painting and we pause, we can watch as the brush catches up to the cursor. Right, so we are pausing right now and we will catch up to the cursor and that little magenta line that we see, which is called the leash, is just catching up along the leash. Now, if we turn that off, paint, and after a second we stop, wherever we pause and release the cursor, Photoshop will not catch up that line to where the cursor is, but it's just going to stop. Whereas, if we turn on catch up on stroke end, then when we pause and let go, Photoshop is simply going to draw a straight line between where the cursor is right now and where the paint stroke led off. Another amazing option here is the pulled string mode, especially useful if we are trying to change directions. So, if we were to click once to lay down the first paint stroke, nothing happens as long as we keep moving the cursor within the radius of the circle. But, once we pull the cursor taunt, Photoshop starts painting. Which means, if we have to go into another direction, all we need to do is simply pull back on the string a little bit. Decide which direction we want to go and then pull to the edge of the radius. Again, in order to change the direction, all we need to do is just click and drag to that radius. So, this can be really helpful when we do need to change directions. Another option here. The adjust for zoom is going to be really useful if we are using the same brush to zoom in and out. It helps make the smoothness seem consistent regardless of the zoom level. Alright, let's fill this area with white. We'll use the shortcut Ctrl plus Delete to fill it up with our color. If we were going to do a lot of painting on Photoshop, it's always a better idea to equip yourself with a good pressure-sensitive tablet. It's a very good investment too, because so far, when we have changed opacity, we have done that on pursed stroke basis. So, let us just set the smoothing down to 10% using a keyboard, a shortcut, Alter plus 1. This will give us 10%. So, if we want to bring variation in the opacity of the wall we paint, we cannot use a mouse or something else which is not pressure sensitive. So we could just paint and then change it to 50% and paint again. But we can't easily do the transition in the one degree of opacity to another. So we'll set this back up to 100 by hitting the zero key. And if we were using a webcom tablet with a pressure sensitive pen, we have to click this icon right here and now we can see that if we press lightly, 
we are getting a lower opacity. And as we press harder, we'll get full opacity of the color. We'll now toggle that off and this time we'll click on this icon which will change the size of the brush. We'll now get a little bit bigger of a brush using the right bracket key. When we paint with less pressure, we get a smaller stroke. And then when we increase the pressure, we get the larger stroke. And of course, we can turn on these two at the same time. And this way, we can get a smaller, less opaque paint stroke, which will then evolve into a greater opacity brush, which is much thicker. Let's now look at two. Two shortcuts before we wrap up. If we want to reset our default colors, we can tap the D key. And if we want to exchange our foreground and background color, we can tap the X key. We'll learn more about the different types of brushes in Photoshop as well as how to create our own custom brushes in the tutorials coming up.